All right, let's talk about environmental variables within OSX. So very often when you're doing development for various platforms, if you're doing mobile development with iOS, with Android, uh, you're working with things like Cordova, eventually you're going to get to a point where you need to change the environmental variables. You want to reference things like the path. The path is a variable that the operating system has which gives it a list of places to check. If you ask it to run a program, it can look in all these various places that you have inside your environmental path variable. So that's generally what environmental variables are. Uh, a list of name value pairs that the operating system can reference to figure out how to carry out tasks. So how do I see an environmental variable? Well, if you are on the in their terminal and you type echo and then the name of the variable with a dollar sign in front of it, like path, there we go. This is my path variable on my computer currently. And there's other ones that I have. Java Home is one. This is the location where I've got J my JDK installed, my Java developer kit. Uh, I think I've got another one called ADT Home. Yeah. So we have these various variables that are saved. And if I wanted to create a brand new one, I can do it right here in the terminal on the command line. I can say export and then the name of the variable. Let's create a variable called Steve and I'm going to set it equal to the value Booyah. There we go. Done. I have now created a variable called Steve and I've given it the value Booyah. If I write echo Steve I'm just going to get the text Steve coming back. If I say echo dollar sign Steve, like I did up here, dollar sign Java Home, ADT path, dollar sign Steve, there we go. There's the value of this. If I wanted to change the value, I can use the export command again. I can say export Steve is now equal to, and I'm going to use whatever the current value of Steve is, plus a space, and then the string buddy. Now I've updated this variable to now contain whatever it currently had plus a space plus the word buddy. So if I say echo dollar sign Steve, there we go, booyah buddy. That's now the new value. Now unfortunately this is a temporary variable which although there may be circumstances where you want to do that most of the time you want to keep your variables around. So if I close my terminal right now, so if I quit out of my terminal, I start up a new instance of the terminal, zoom in on the text so I can read that a little bit easier, and so you can read it easier. Now if I say echo Steve blank, there's nothing. That variable no longer exists because it was temporarily created with that export command. If you want to hang on to your variables, what we can do is edit a file called the bash profile. So I'm going to jump to cd tilde, which is my home directory. There we go. If I list, that's what I get inside there, but if I list dash la to see all the hidden files as well, inside this long list here, there is a file called bash profile. This is the actual file that is red. Every time I boot up terminal, it looks to see, okay, I know who you are, I know what user you are, I'm going to look at your bash profile file and see what environmental variables you have defined there, what other things you have defined. So I'm going to edit that file. I'm going to add that Steve variable inside of there. If I wanted to take a look at this, I can actually um, I can open that up in a program. So I'm going to open it in brackets. That's my IDE that I use for all my web and mobile development. So I'm going to uh, type in the command here to open the program brackets. And I'm going to be opening the file called bash profile. There we go. So here is my bash profile file. And these are the commands. So ADT home, Java home, path, 
these are all the things that I have defined. And you can see right here, I'm using the variable ADT home within this path. So this variable is being used here. And my Java home variable is being used here. And so the old existing path, if there's other things that are set temporarily, those will be added or prefixed on to the beginning of this string. Every time you see a colon inside of here, that is the separator. So this is a list of different values, and the colon is the separator between the different values. Now, before I actually make any changes in here, before I create this Steve variable, I'm going to jump back to my terminal, clear this out. Um, I am still in my home directory. So this is where the bash profile file exists. What I want to do, and this is a best practice, anytime you are going to edit your bash profile, you're going to be updating this stuff. This is used by lots of programs, by your operating system. You want to make a backup copy. So we're going to make a backup copy of the bash profile, and we're going to do that simply by copying it from one file name into another. Now, the first time you do this, you're going to want to do touch bash profile. What that does is it just updates the last access time for that file, or if the file doesn't exist, it creates it. So the first time you come in here, you're going to create the bash profile file. If I do this a hundred times, all I'm doing is I'm changing the last time the file was accessed. So I'm not hurting anything by doing this. I'm then going to copy the latest version of my bash, bash profile to bash profile underscore backup. Now, that's not a um, restricted or specific file name. It's just what I'm calling it. So I can tell by looking at it that, oh, okay, this is just the backup copy of this file. Just It's kind of a note to whoever's looking to say that this is the backup file. So I've overwritten my old backup with the current version of the file. I've opened it inside of brackets. I could have done that after I had done this part here. Now if I come inside of here, reload from disk because it, I did the touch command. So that's what happened there. That's why it was prompting me. So we're going to create the variable called Steve and we're going to set that equal to Booyah Buddy. And I save it. Okay. Now this is my new version of that profile, if I say echo dollar sign Steve here, it's still blank. The reason for that is I haven't closed this terminal editor. It's the process of opening this that accesses this file. So again, we will close it, open up a new terminal, zoom in to make it easier to read. And now if I say echo Steve, there we have it. There's the value. So this is how you can edit environmental variables on a Mac. You can do it temporarily by just using the export command right on the command line, or you can make a backup and then edit your bash profile file. All right, and that's it. Any questions, please leave in the comments, and as always, thanks for watching.